This video from Learn Electrics is a continuation of our exam help series for electrical exams and assessments. The video is directed towards the 2382 18th edition exam and all references are made to the Brown Wiring Regulations book with the long title BS 7671 2018 Amendment 2 2022. This is the book that you will need to work from for the 18th edition exam. The exam will always include a lot of questions on tables and these are found throughout the book. They can account for anything between 8 to 15% of the exam questions. Can you find the correct table? And will you find the correct answer? Follow the methods shown here and attempt each of the questions shown. At the end of the video, you will almost certainly understand how to find answers to questions on tables. And there's a mistake in the Wiring Greg's book that you will need to correct before your exam. We will show you the error and what to do about it. In this video, everything starts with the table of tables, which is found on pages 573 onwards. The easiest way to find it is to remember that it comes immediately before the index, which is the last item in the book. Pause the video and look for it now. It's important that you can find it quickly and easily in the exam. Table of tables lists all the tables that appear in the wiring regulations book. The tables are laid out in strict page number order as they actually appear in the book. Look at the table order in table of tables. It starts with part 4, then part 5, part 6, part 7 and finally the appendices. The table number is shown along with the title of the table and this is the key to finding answers quickly. The question will always give you enough information to find the correct table. You must understand how table of tables is laid out. It will save you lots of time in the exam. What is the question asking about? Which table is it suggesting that you look at? There are 10 questions to attempt from across the book. We will ask a question and suggest that you pause the video and attempt an answer yourself. Then move on to the next slide where we show you the answer and how to find it quickly. Each question will have four possible answers, as in the exam. Choose the most appropriate answer and be aware that sometimes two answers both look correct, but only one answer will be the most appropriate for that question. Straight into the questions then. We begin with question one, a popular question and something that we should all know. The question asks, a TNCS final circuit has a nominal voltage, U0, of 230 volts AC. The socket outlets are protected by a 32 amp circuit breaker. The maximum disconnection time for this circuit should not exceed what? And there are four possible answers. Choose the most appropriate. Pause the video and make your choice. The answer is on the next slide. The clue is in the question. Maximum disconnection time. With practice, you will know that there is a table for this. We just need to find it. Go to page 573, Table of Tables. The question asks for maximum disconnection time. Look for this in the Table of Tables. And the very top line of page 573 is what we're looking for, word for word. It tells us to go to page 65. All the information that we need is in the question. It's a 230 volt nominal circuit so we want the second block of data with the voltage between 120 volts and up to but not exceeding 230 volts. It's an AC circuit and the question tells us it is TNCS so the TN row is the one that we want. Where the AC column and the TN row cross is our answer 0 0.4 seconds. This is our answer and we should choose answer C. Question 2 now about reduced low voltage systems. This question 
is to do with 110 volt systems as we would find on construction sites, for example. The 110 volt electrical supply is actually a 55-0, 55 volt system. Let's look at the question. What is the maximum permitted earth fault loop impedance for a reduced low voltage circuit with a nominal voltage, U0, of 55 volts AC and protected by a 20 amp type B, BSEN60898 circuit breaker? Pause the video and make your choice, choosing just one answer from the four offered. Go to Table of Tables on page 573. We are looking for a table with the words Maximum Earth Fault Loop Impedance. There are five tables to choose from. Tables 41.2 to 41.6. But which one do we go for? Table 41.6 contains the clue. U0 of 55 volts single phase. And it also says 55 volts in the question. We are directed to page 74 where we find the correct table. Table 41.6 looks complicated. It's not. Follow the question. A type B breaker, so we have a choice of just two columns. 55 volts, so now we are limited to one column. 20 amps tells us which row we need, and where the row and column cross is the answer that we need, 0 0.52 ohms. We should choose answer C. The maximum earth fault loop impedance permitted is 0 0.52 ohms. If you find the right table, you will find the right answer. Now to question 3. What is the temperature limit under normal load conditions for an accessible part of equipment within arm's reach that is intended to be touched but not handheld and is made of a non-metallic material. Pause the video and make your choice. Look at the wording of the question and look at the title of the table. The same words are used. We know that the answer will be in table 42.1. Follow the question. Start with the words is intended to be touched but not handheld and follow the green arrow. Then we have the words is made of a non-metallic material, so follow the blue arrow. The answer must be 80 degrees Celsius. Going back to the answer choices, we have answer A, 80 degrees Celsius maximum. Question 4 shows a calculation, but the question is not a calculation. Always read the question carefully. In the adiabatic equation, as shown below, the value of K for a 10 square millimetre copper conductor with 70 degree thermoplastic insulation will be what? The equation is shown only so that you know which K they are making reference to. You will need a table of K values to find the answer. Pause the video, find the table. The key words to look for are values of K and table of tables shows that this is on page 99. Just as before, use the information in the question to narrow your search down to columns and rows. Thermoplastics is first, and this eliminates half of the table. Now, 70 degrees, and we are down to just a quarter of the table. The question tells us 10 square millimeter conductors, so find the column that shows up to, but not more than, 300 square millimetres. And there is only one column of interest now. Look down the left hand side and find the word copper as given in the question. Where row and column cross is our answer. K equals 115. Now that we know that K is 115, we should choose answer B. And how easy is that? Moving on to question number five now. The question asks, when identifying conductors by colour, the negative of a two-wire unearthed DC power circuit should be coloured what? And four choices. Pause the video, find the table, make a decision. 
This table should be easy to find in Table of Tables. The key word is identifying conductors. Find the almost exact word match and we are sent to page 134 where we find Table 51. Now, it is just a case of analysing the question. What does it want to know? It asks about a two-wire unearthed DC power circuit. We can find that in the table, and now we have two possible colours to choose from. The question asks for negative, so that narrows it down to just one colour. Our answer is white. And we must choose answer D, white. Easy if you follow a logical method. Question 6 is next. Here's the question. The minimum value of insulation resistance for a circuit with a nominal voltage above 500 volts AC and tested at 1000 volts DC should be... And we have four choices of answer. Pause the video and choose the most appropriate answer. We should know that this question is to do with testing and that testing is part 6 of the Brown Book. Looking through Table of Tables, there is only one entry for part 6 and this is Table 64, Minimum Values of Insulation Resistance. Just what we're looking for. Go to page 234. Again, break the question down into discrete pieces of information. Above 500 volts, find that row and test it at 1000 volts. The last column gives us the answer 1 mega ohm of resistance. Now choose an answer and we should go for answer B, 1 mega ohm. Be careful when choosing. Some questions on this will give you one with a big M and one with a small M. The answer must be with a big M, 1 million ohms of resistance. Had you chosen the little M, this would be 1 milli ohm, one thousandth of an ohm, and you would have been wrong. And now for question 7. What is the minimum cross-sectional area of a flexible cable for a caravan connection if the rated current is 32 amps? Pause the video, find the table and choose an answer. The question tells us what to look for in the table of tables at the back of the book. And we should know that caravans are special locations, part 7. So, the table will begin with a 7. Table 721, and we find this table on page 319 of the book. It is now a simple case of finding 32 amps in the left column and matching this to the right column. And here is the answer, 6 square millimetres. Answer C. So easy with the right table selected. Now for question 8. And this will involve a very small, very easy calculation. What is the maximum permitted voltage drop in volts for a lighting circuit with a nominal voltage of 230 volts that is supplied from a low voltage installation supplied directly from a public low voltage distribution system? There is a table for voltage drop somewhere. Let's find it in the tables. Using the data from the question, we can easily find the maximum voltage drop for a lighting circuit supplied from a public system. It is 3%. But the question wants it in volts, not percentages. So we must make a small calculation. To find the volts from the percentage, multiply 230 volts by 3 and then divide by 100. And out pops the answer 6.9 volts. Answer D. Notice that the possible answers also include the percentages. Just to see if you are paying attention to the question. Very sneaky. Don't be caught out by it. Moving on, we have question number 9. What is the rating factor, CA, for an ambient air temperature of 40 degrees Celsius for a conductor with 70 degree thermoplastic insulation? But hold on, before you dash off to find the answer. There's a typo in some of the wiring regulations books. Some of the brown books have been printed with an error, which we can sort out right now. 
Go to page 574, where you will find that Table of Tables has an omission. Between the entry for Table 4A3 and 4B2, we should have Table 4B1. If it's not there, if your book has this error, correct it now, before the exam. The data shown here in the yellow box should be written onto page 574 somewhere, so that you have it available if needed in the exam. Back to the question then. What is the rating factor CA for an ambient air temperature of 40 degrees Celsius for a conductor with 70 degrees Celsius thermoplastic insulation? And we now know that table 4B1 is on page 441. Follow the clues in the question. 70 degree thermoplastic narrows the search to just one column. Find 40 degrees Celsius on the left to find the correct row. Where the column and row meet is the answer, a rating factor of 0 0.87. The answer, finally, is answer B, 0 0.87. If you still haven't updated your book, do so now. You may need that information in the exam. And now, question 10, the last question in this help video. A 70 degrees Celsius thermoplastic insulated and sheathed flat cable with protective conductor and copper conductors has a CSA of 6 square millimetres. What is the voltage drop per ampere per metre for this cable? There is no calculation to be done. Just find the table and answer the question. The first line of the question gives us the title of the table. We can find this on page 575 of Table of Tables. It is table 4D5 and we are sent to page 456. This sheathed flat cable with a protective conductor is what we know as twin and earth cable. Remember this one, you will not find a table called twin and earth. This is it. Follow the question. All it's asking is, if the live conductor size is 6 square millimetres, then what is the voltage drop per ampere per metre? Don't calculate anything. Just look at the table. Find 6 on the left-hand side, trace along the row to the right-hand side, and read off the answer. 7.3. Our answer is A. 7.3 millivolts per amp per metre. That's it. That's all that is asked. And that was the last question on Table of Tables. There are more help videos for exams in the pipeline. Keep adding to your mental toolbox. Practice is the best way to improve your exam score. Watch the video again. Write out the questions. Write out the answers. Repetition is key. The same questions again and again until you understand the answers, until you understand how the wiring regulations book is laid out. It's like your driving test. You didn't have just one half hour lesson and then sit the test. No, you practiced on the same roads, doing the same things over and over again. And good luck. We hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos. And remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video and you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.